Okay, we can see here we've got a wild radish plant that's gone under the header comb, and on that plant we've got pods that will go on to be viable, and we've got flowers. Now this plant will be sprayed, but a pod like that probably has viable seed in it. If I find a dark green embryo in this wild radish pod, that seed is viable regardless of what we spray it with. Whereas this plant over here, we can see that that was a wild radish plant and it's been cut off uh, and the seeds pods have gone into the chaff cut. Harvesters come through and cut that one off. Yep. If we look around here, we don't have any pods on the ground. So all of those have gone in the chaff cut. See this taproot structure of the wild radish plant. That looks like a, a short root, but I can tell you that would go down about two metres in this soil. If there's any subsoil constraint like soil acidity, this taproot goes straight through it and accesses all the moisture under the crop. Um, so yeah, it's an amazing root system on this wild radish plant, which is a big part of its uh, success. So there's always the issue with chaff carts that we don't get 100% of the weed seeds. And we know from Michael Walsh's work with ryegrass that we get about 55% of the ryegrass seed into the chaff cart wild radish potentially we get a little bit higher percentage into the chaff cart. So growers always ask, well what's the point of it if we're only getting 50% of the seeds into the chaff cart? Now the thing about these things is if we have a seed bank that is out of control, adding a chaff cart probably only slightly reduces that seed bank. Whereas if we have a weed seed bank that we are just about managing to maintain using herbicides and normal farming practices, adding the chaff cart just gets that seed bank into decline and ultimately that's what it's all about.